please like and subscribe. Let's grow in AI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Tuesday, January 16th. I hope everybody had a great day yesterday. You might have been off work. But I hope you had an opportunity to reflect on the life of uh, Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the contributions he made in his tragically shortened life. You know, today we're going to have the head men's basketball coach of LSU Alexandria. Uh, they're the generals. And then we're going to go through some conference action last night. And today might get interesting because we're going to get ice today. Man, I am thrilled. So let's just get right to it. Uh, let's go straight to the Red River where Xavier played a low-scoring affair, but they beat North American uh, 57-44. Jeremy Lindsay, 12 points, and Lance Williams, 12 points, 4 rebounds. They go to 11-3. and More importantly, uh, they grab first place in that Red River Conference. They're going to play Shreveport on Thursday. Mark the calendar. That will be a big showdown. Now, if we look at the standings in the Red River, uh, nobody, uh, Presto didn't update him and neither did the conference, but, uh, Alexandria now is seven and two, uh, they're a half game up on Shreveport and LSU Alexandria and LSU Alexandria, as I've said the last couple days, uh, they've been a surprise. A lot of people wrote them off. So we wanted to get head coach Demario Jackson on to talk about his team, its turnaround and, uh, you know, how that took place and why they're playing well so well right now uh, and he gave us the time i really appreciate it let's listen to coach jackson cascade hoops talk billy d hey i got uh, demario jackson he's head men's basket basketball coach at lsua that's louisiana state alexandria welcome coach thanks for being on the show man thank you for having me man it's a blessing you know just before we started here we were talking about you know how i think you started the season two and four if i remember right you've now won five or six out of seven or five out of six uh, a lot of people were kind of writing you off early on and uh you were talking about your strength of schedule talk about your early schedule and how you got in that hole i mean we started off zero and three um you know we go to diller uh we're up 14 and we collapse um we two come to us i think we're up 12 mm -hmm. uh, i think don't 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 quote that but i want to say up 12 we collapse uh, and then we go to SAG, you again, we just, as a program, we just wasn't ready to win. Um, so, you know, people, I ain't going to say people were writing us off, people wrote us off. I think those two different terminologies. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, but not understanding that two of those three teams has been consistently in uh, the NAI National Tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not understanding, and then not also not realizing our roster. Well, we have... We brought three returners back, and then we have a brand-new team with a brand-new coaching staff. And, you know, you try to simulate uh, you try to simulate the game and practice all the time, but, I mean, if we if we be realistic and we be honest, we know that's hard to do. Uh, so, you know, we had to get game reps and, you know, just stay the course. It's a long season, man. A lot happened. You know, a lot of, a lot of things happened. And, you know, thing, guys started to really master their roles – Guys started to take it up a notch. And just as a program, we're just in a different place than we were in November. So, Coach, you're starting, if if I remember, you're you're starting a couple of freshmen. Is that, is that right? Yeah, we start two freshmen. Um, Isaiah Howard, who's actually leading our conference in assists, and Elliot McQuillan, who's our third leading scorer. And I think he's like top top 15 in the conference in scoring. Um, both of those two young men came with me from Port Allen High School. Um, so they kind of got a one up on some people, uh, for lack of a better terminology, because they, they understand, you know, the the terminology, they understand the things that I expect on a day to day basis. Oh, OK. OK. So is that where you were just before you went to LSUA? Was at Port Allen? I was at Port Allen High School. Yes, sir. OK. And so uh, those freshmen have really been performing well for you, but you got a uh a senior and a junior that are uh, really putting up the yeah. points for you, J.D. Allen and Cashing Net. Yeah. I mean, they're there every night. I mean, they're almost half your points, half your rebounds. Talk about the performance of those guys. 
Man, listen, you know, it's one word to describe both of those young men, and that's dog. <laughs> they yep. both got it, man. They both, but, you know, you see, y'all see what they do in, in the game. I get a chance to see what those dudes do on an everyday basis. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, you know, the skill development that they're getting in on their own time, the extra running that they've done on their own time, you know, all the extra stuff that they're doing that's sacrificing their time. So it doesn't surprise me that they're having the success that they're having. You know, talking about cash first, cash is, you know what cash is going to bring, man. Mm -hmm. Whether it's practice, whether it's the game, that kid just want to win, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. Um, And fortunately for us, he's on on our side. (laughs) There you go. You know, cash is one of those. Cash is one of those players you don't want to have to play against. You don't have to game plan against because the things that he does, you can't simulate in your practice. You know, you can talk about it. You can try to game plan for it, but it's just it's hard because of the things that he's going to bring. Uh, and, I, and you know, of course you talk about the scoring, but I'm talking about all the other things that he does for our team. Mm-hmm. You know, like leading, being that guy that when it ain't going right, that can just – do something that's going to impact it for us in a positive way. Uh, on top of the things that he's bringing scoring wise, uh, I just I just told you he's leading the league and he's leading the conference in rebounding. And Cash is not even six four. Yeah, he's getting almost ten uh, rebounds a game. Right, and, and you hear what I said? He's not even six four. Yeah, he may be six three and a half. Well, what makes him such he's a great a rebounder? Dog. He's just a dog. Rebounding don't take skill; that's a want to. Mm-hmm. You know, that's me wanting the ball better than anybody else on the floor, whether you're on my team or on the other team. I completely agree. You know, he's just, he just has a, he has a net for the ball. And then JD, man, we talk about JD to tomorrow. And <laughs> I, you won't hear, you won't hear me say one, one negative thing. And that's not me being biased. That's me being honest. You know, that kid right now, that kid was probably in the gym and it's cold. You know, it's real cold outside, yeah. but I promise you, we had practice at eight o'clock this morning. I promise you that young man going back to the gym. He's just he's a hard a worker. Big, He's a hard worker. He's completely accepted of being that guy and being and, and people that listen, they don't understand what I mean when I say being that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, that guy has, is, is putting his team on his shoulders and he's being what you call a senior. You know, you see the offensive side and that's, you know, that's great, but you don't see he's also guarding the, the, the other team best player and he's actually doing a really good job. On you don't see that he's averaging five plus rebounds. Like, you know, we got a lot of guys that just brought into winning and we got a lot of guys that brought into team and then themselves, you know, and that's why that's one of the things that has helped us, you know, propel as we've done. You know, when you have guys like JD and cash with all that desire, you know, typically it'll kind of bring, even if guys come into the program, not really having that, that'll usually it's contagious is what I'm trying to say. Are you finding that? (laughs) And that's it, that's it, that's it, and okay, now, so now that tell me you listen, because that tells me you just heard what I said, it's become contagious. Mm-hmm. Those two guys doing what they've done has become contagious throughout our whole program. Not just our locker room, I'm talking about coaching staff, I'm talking about managers, I'm talking about the entire program. Right. Uh, and then needless to say, uh, Jason Perry has done a great job of, of leading. He's one of He's one of the three returners, along with Cash and along with JD that we brought back. You know, those three guys have done a tremendous job of kind of showing our other guys how this, you know, how this conference works. You know, the day the day in and day out grind, you know, the grind of the games and going to these different gyms that we're going to. And those three guys have done a great job of just leading, is along pa- with some other guys. Is Perry kind of your off-the-bench energy guy? He's that glue guy, man. Yeah. He's that glue guy. He comes in and he immediately impacts that game. Like, he's that guy that, you know, I'll tell you this. Uh, he won't mind me saying this. You know, EJ is out for us right now. Uh, he's been out the last four games. Okay. Uh, and we're three and one without him. So just, you know, and that, not to switch subjects, but this just, what I'm about to tell you, just tells you the character of our young men on our team. We're down one starter, a guy that's our third leading scorer on the team, averaging double figures. And uh, we just went three and one in a four-game road strip. You know, where you, you know, you drop one to Texas College and you go to Jarvis, who, who, had, who was rolling, right. and beat them. You know, you turn around and go to Xavier. You're down 18 with nine minutes ago. You win that game. And then you go to North American, who I think was on like a three or four game winning streak, if not more. And then you go beat them without a starter. So that just tells you that's a testament to the team, man, to, the, to those young men in that locker room that's just bought into doing whatever it takes to win. 
and we got a next man up mentality. You know, we 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 don't make any excuses. But you know, going back to uh, going back to uh, Jason, Jason is just a, he's a worker, man. He's a grinder. He's another one that's gonna be in the gym before the day's over. You know, the, the guys are just bought into doing sacrifice in their own time and being disciplined and being tough. You know, that's which are those two things that's gonna give us a chance every night, and they're buying into that on an everyday basis. You know, a moment ago you were referring to the to the conference, and I think you're spot on when you're talking about having guys around who know, you know, what what it's like in all the gyms, what to expect, how to win in the conference. I, I've seen that all my life where you've got to – I always say guys have got to get through – wherever they're playing, guys have got to get through the conference once before they really get effective. Uh, but uh, looking at your conference right now, you know, you're, you're locked in a first-place tie with uh, Shreveport – Xavier and then Texas College just won one game back. It's going to be a dogfight. Are you just kind of digging in, ready to go? Oh man, we you know we we one of the things we say is we we take the long route. You know we don't take it. We haven't taken any shortcuts. You know this is what we expected. We expected to be a dogfight. We don't want you know we didn't ask for any handouts. We don't want any handouts. We want to have to work for everything we you know we have and we and we've had to work for everything that we have. Uh, and we know, you know, we know this was going to be a tough conference. I mean, you got Shreve, who's top, who's top, top five, I want to say. Uh, you got Xavier, who's top 25. Texas College is a good basketball team. They rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing about our conference is we, you mentioned those three teams, but any given night, man, if you don't bring it, you can go, you can go down. You know, like we have Louisiana Christian tomorrow, who's a rivalry game, but you know, they're well coached. Uh, you know, you don't bring it, you can be beaten on any given night. Regardless if you're playing the team that's on paper that's in last place or if you're playing the team that's on paper that's in first place. That's the good thing about our conference. And I think that's just a testament to, you know, the coaches in the conference and just the conference overall. You know, I'm glad you brought up uh, Louisiana Christian. I was going to ask you about them because uh, their record is certainly not sterling, but they've given everybody fits. Everybody. Everybody they played this season. That's a that's a you know testament to to uh, Coach Rennie, man. He does a great job with those guys, man. And and you know they they've been like you said they've been in a lot of close games, uh, a lot of them. Like mm-hmm. a lot of their games have been close, you know. But again, that just goes back to you know Coach Rennie and you know his staff and those players staying locked in and you know just continue wanting to you know wanting to win. And that's just that goes around our conference as a whole. You know, you go look at Paul Quinn. Paul Quinn beats uh, Shreve. You know, you look at Texas College, they beat Xavier. You know, yep. on any given night, man, you can be beat if you don't bring it. You know, you're up there uh, in northern northern Louisiana. You're up in Alexandria. Uh, so who is your – is is LSU Shreveport your biggest rival? You're in state, or is there another closer team to you? You're quite a ways from Shreveport. Uh, we're in central Louisiana. You know, and us uh, uh, us and uh, Louisiana Christian are literally probably five minutes apart. Okay. Uh, so that's our rivalry. There's your rivalry. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Mm-hmm. So they're in yes, Alexandria sir. as well? They're in Pineville. Pineville and Alexandria are kind of intertwined with each other. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, sorry, I just had to ask that. I'm always curious who somebody, you know, everybody would, looking from afar, I'm on the West Coast, you would always think, yes, well, at LSU Alexandria and LSU Shreveport must be rivals, but I started thinking, well, no, I bet there's a I closer mean, there team. Is some, there is, but now, you know, needless to say, there is some rivalry there, too. Right. Um, but when you say who's the biggest rivalry as far as you mean like cross town rivalry or something like that, uh, you you know it's it's us and LCU. You know, Coach, I I worked in uh, uh, Louisiana quite a bit. I worked down Baton Rouge and I worked up in uh, okay. up in a uh, Winfield just south of you there. And one thing I noticed when I was back there is that was one of the few states I went to where. Uh, when I was working where everybody knew about NAI basketball. Uh, talk about fans there in Louisiana. Man, I think we have some of the greatest fans, in, you know, in the in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, now I'm gonna be biased, and I say I think our fan nation, our fans are the best. Uh, uh, of course, the Alexandria fans are nation. the best. We'll give you that. Uh, um, but you know, just across the state, man. Uh, not even just not even just referring to NAI, just you know, Louisiana basketball period. As far as high school, college, mm-hmm. uh, I think we have some of the best fans in the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I always found when I was down there too. Because I always like talk basketball, and it wasn't hard to find uh, people to talk college basketball with. Coach, sure, you're coming up on a, a big, really critical home stand. What's it going to take for the Generals to, uh, you know, have a successful home stand and you know really pad that schedule during this home home uh, this, this these home games? 
I man, we gotta we have to continue to be disciplined. We have to continue to be tough. Uh, and you know, we have to get we we've gotten better and we've taken the right steps and being better defensive. Um, offense, our offense are gonna come. Uh, we gonna continue. We gonna continue to get better offensively, but. You know, those three things I just mentioned are three things we just have to continue to strive on, and we just have to continue to stay in attack mode. Uh, we can't relax. We can't overlook anybody. We can't think that we got it figured out now. We have to have that, that same mindset we had coming out of being 0-3. We have to have that same mindset now. Well, we, we just want more. Uh, we want to be disciplined. We want to be tough. We want to defend. We want to make it as hard, as, or as hard for our opponents as we possibly can. You know, Coach, I one thing I did notice going through your team, breaking it down, you've had trouble shooting the ball. Uh, you know, is, is that just getting guys in the gym, or what do you think has contributed to that? Um, I think it is, it is, we'll shoot better. Yeah. Uh, I won't. I definitely won't say it's having trouble getting guys in the gym because our guys are in the gym. Okay, yeah. Uh, they're in there. That's a, that's a fact. And, you know, they're in there without us having to tell them to get in there, too. Uh, so... I don't think that – I know that – I ain't going to say I don't think – I know that's not the issue. It's just it, – it's going to click for us offensively pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but our focus has been being better defensive. We're scoring – even with, you know, how bad the papers say that we've shot it, I think we're still averaging over 80 points. Yes, you are, yeah. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, we just need to continue to get better on defense and, you know, off, offense will come. Yeah, it doesn't matter how well you shoot. What matters is the score at the end of the game. That's what I've always found. Right. It's the number right. of like points said, you can even, score. Even with us shooting it, going through some shooting loans, we're still averaging over 80. Yeah. That's enough to win ball game. Now, you can't give up 81. <laughs> <laughs> Good you know. point. You know, Coach, I really appreciate you giving me this time. Uh, let everybody hear about uh, LSU, LSUA basketball. I mean, congratulations on the turnaround you've made early in the season. Uh, you're red hot and rolling. Good luck during this homestand. And uh, maybe we'll get you back on as this River, Red River gets a little tighter down the, down the season here. Oh, man, I appreciate you for having me. Uh, man, like I said, man, it's, you know, humbly, it's, it's, not, it's not a surprise that, you know, we're, we're just, our guys have just gotten better, man. Yeah. Uh, they stayed the course, you know, and nobody's put their head down. Nobody's made any excuses. Just continue to stay the work and, you know, just kept kept chipping at it and kept chipping at it. And we're going to keep chipping at it. We don't we feel like we we're not even close to our best basketball yet. So we, we still got a long ways to go. Well, keep grinding. You know, that's Demario Jackson. He's the head men's basketball coach, LSUA, down there in the Red River Conference. Thank you very much, coach. Oh, man. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to being back. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot to uh, Demario Jackson and LSUA. Uh, really appreciate him giving me the time. That's a great turnaround. Like he said, a lot of people weren't writing him off. They had written him off. Uh, so we'll have to see how it's going to come down at the end of the season. It's going to be a dogfight in that Red River. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Thank you, Coach. So let's look at the Great Plains. Big story out of there. Northwestern beat Midland 113.75, but that ain't the story. So Alex Van Calsby, uh, 52 points. I don't know if it's the, but it's one of the top outputs this season. This guy is a great basketball player. He's leading scorer for Northwestern probably 70% of the time. But congratulations. Uh, it's really great to see a, a guy have a great night like that, a night he'll remember his in, his entire life as he looks back on his career. I'm sure the Midland Warriors weren't, uh, uh, happy about it, but uh, it's a great moment in basketball when somebody can score over 50 points. So Northwestern, they go to 14-3, and three, and this sets up this big game here. They're going to go to Morningside. They have to travel to Morningside on Wednesday. Uh, the game's in the heart tonight. Uh, everything kind of went according to Hoyle. Central Methodist, Graceland, and Mid-American Nazarene all won. They were able to keep pace with Baker, who uh, was idle tonight. So let's take a look at the updated standings. So Baker was a uh, full game ahead, but as I said, they were idle tonight. So Central Methodist, Graceland, Mid-American Nazarene, all three uh, won tonight. So they're now only a half game back. It's definitely a four-team four race, and that's going to be a fun one to watch. Who's going to blink first? You know, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate you uh, listening to the show. As I said, uh, going to be uh, 
ice today. I'm just absolutely thrilled about that. We'll be back on tomorrow, and we'll have uh, uh, Dugan, Lynn, Dugan Lynn, the head men's basketball coach, Tennessee Southern, uh, as long as I don't lose all my power tomorrow. Hey, thanks a lot. Everybody be safe. And get out and watch Thank NAI you very much basketball. for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America. <laughs> <laughs>